that you, you really need to be purpose-driven more than you need to be process-driven. But I want to take that one word more. And, and I'm not sure it really needs to be defined a, as a more or a less. I think when you emphasize, you know, the why and the how, it goes back to the chicken and the egg. It, it's, it's the cause or the effect. And, and I think I tell people that if your goals are connected to purpose, it will increase productivity. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the People Hum interview series. This is your host, Anushka at People Hum. People Hum is an end to end, one view integrated human capital management automation platform. The winner of the 2019 Global Cody Award for FCM that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work. We run the People Hum blog and video channel, which receives more than 400,000 visitors a year. And we also publish several interviews with well known names globally every month. Today we have with us Steve Gilliland. Steve is a member of the Speaker Hall of Fame and is one of the most in-demand and top-rated speakers in the world. Recognized as a master storyteller and brilliant comedian, he can be heard on Sirius XM Radio's Laugh USA and Blue Collar Radio. With an appeal that transcends ba barriers of age, culture and occupation, plus an interactive and an entertaining style, Steve shows audiences how to open doors to success in their careers, their relationships, and their lives. Presenting to over 250,000 people a year, more than 2 million have now heard him speak, with audiences encompassing nearly three dozen industries. We're so happy and honored to have someone of his stature today on our interview series. Welcome, Steve. We're thrilled to be talking to you today. It's great to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. The pleasure is absolutely ours. So diving right deep into the interview, you know, you've also been named the author of the year after perennially, you know, making the publisher's bestseller list. So can you just briefly in a nutshell speak to us about HR and the leadership ideals that you've really highlighted in these books? As a writer and an author, I've always focused on people, you know, you know, the greatest asset that any organization has. And of course, I'll say the right people that, are, you know, that is. Um, the writings, for example, I wrote a book called The Cherry on Top, which we released last year. And it's literally the subtitle is What Adds Value. And the book is about understanding the importance of developing and delivering value in everything you do. Um, great companies with great cultures add value to their people, their products, and their services. Um, and, and, and I talk about the many things that add value in the book. Um, another book that I wrote, which I have delivered this presentation literally thousands of times. It's called Making a Difference, a Matter of Purpose, Passion, and Pride. And I just believe that, you know, purpose is what drives us, passion fuels us, pride defines us. And as leaders, we have to understand the influence that we have on the people that we are trying to influence. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that I talk about in there is thinking about the five people that made the biggest difference in your life and thinking about you know, what it is that they gave you and asking yourself as a leader, are you passing that on? And then the most popular thing that I've ever written, and it, it's, it's withstood the, the, the time, you know, the old the sample of, um, you know, will this book continue to sell? Will this book continue to impact? And it has. Um, it's called Enjoy the Ride. And I just believe that a happy work environment means fewer sick days, um, people work harder, um, there's more productivity and, and it, you know, research shows, it, you know, that if people are positive in that mindset, um, there's just more productivity. That's, that's great. Uh, firstly, congratulations on the success of all your books, Steve. Um, that's absolutely great. And I completely agree with you on the fact that uh, it's um, organizational values that really need to be um, kept in mind. And accordingly, um, change needs to be fostered in that too, that which is sustainable and healthy change. So really agree with you on that one. So going on to the next question, you know, um, Steve, you yourself have influenced so many lives through presentations, CDs and DVDs. So as someone who has really actively been using technology to spread the word, I feel compelled to, you know, just understand your take on how technology in an organization can lead us to a more hopeful future especially with the pandemic and digitization um, being used now more than ever. Yeah, and you mentioned the pandemic, and I think one of the things that it opened the eyes of the world up to and a lot of businesses, small businesses, 
um, was that technology, you know, is so useful in so many ways. Uh, in my own business, you know, in a lot of other businesses, you know, CRM, you know, the customer relation manage- management piece that, you know, technology offers. I also think it, it really plays a vital role in improving communication. And we saw that all the platforms that are being used today, you and I, you know, on this Zoom platform, but I think it's how you use the platform. And I think it's, you know, like anything else, it's, it's an evolution. It's going to evolve. They're going to add more bells, more whistles. Um, and then, of course, you have inventory management. You have, you know, the decision making processes, the analytics, all the data. Um, in the United States, it's, and I smile as I say this, but in the United States, in, in sports, they are moving to technology. You know, they are saying that, you know, who's ever going to run this organization, and I don't care what sport it is, they need to be a little bit more data driven. Um, so even in sports, technology is moving the needle. Um, as an author, the things that we are able to do now as a speaker, it has been all virtual since March. So I think the biggest thing is, is the innovation within technology that just kind of continues to raise the bar in how we do what we do. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's a really enlightening and elaborate response that you provided us with. And I can't agree more with you on that one. So um, going on to the next question, you know, Steve, you've built a multi-million dollar company from scratch and that's (laughs) phenomenal, absolutely. So what would you say are some of the key tenets of entrepreneurship and organizational development that everyone must follow? As I've worked with businesses, as I've spoken at events and as I've talked to entrepreneurs, one of the things that I'm always looking for in the conversation, first and foremost, is passion. You know, I just believe that, you know, entrepreneurs and and, and the whole organizational development piece, you have to be passionate. You know, it's it's about loving what you do and knowing why you do it. But 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 you can't ever lose your passion. And in today's world, there are so many things that come into play that try to take that passion from us. Uh, Another thing that is a key, a key is a strong work ethic. And I, and I think this is something that was instilled in me very, very early in life that, you know, you've got to do a phrase, you know, a, a little adage is called, you know, the heavy lifting. You, you got to do the hard work. You, you, you must do that. And then, of course, in the world of HR, um, I, and I think sometimes it's understated, you have to have strong people skills. You, you have to be able to build a relationship, create a relationship You know, it's the sales thing. Somebody will say, well, is it sales? Is it customer service? It's both. However, I put it under relationships. It's building relationships, long-term, just very genuine relationships. And of course, a couple of more determination. Um, And then one that I think sometimes is a little bit confusing is, you know, I'll tell people, you know, you just need to be a little more creative. And when I say that, they'll say, yeah, but I'm not a creative person. Here's why some people aren't creative. It's, it's about the predictability. They like things the way they are. They, you know, they're, they're not willing to make the changes, and they trade opportunity for predictability. And, and I think you know, it, it, it's kind of like one of those, you know, if you have an open mind and you're open to possibilities, sometimes it's that, that little bit of a risk. So I think good entrepreneurs and The organizations that really develop have that more, let's look at the opportunities, let's get away from all the predictability. And then, of course, you know, being competitive, self-starting, open-minded, all of those things. Absolutely. So it's basically keeping your values, um, aligning with them, and obviously having a passion and a strong work ethic. And I completely agree with you on when you said passion really is what acts as a motivating factor and Uh, drives you to constantly do better and be a better version of yourself. Absolutely. Can't agree more. So um, going on to the next question, Steve, do you think in any successful business uh, purpose or the why behind any action must be given more importance? And that is what really supersedes the process or the how behind the action? I've been asked this question many, many times. You know, you're, you're, you're talking to a guy that speaks on a subject of, you know, purpose and passion. Um, people have heard me say, um, you know, that you, you really need to be purpose-driven more than you need to be process-driven. But I want to take that one word more. 
And, and I'm not sure it really needs to be defined as a more or a less. I think when you emphasize, you know, the why and the how, it goes back to the chicken and the egg. It, it's, it's the cause or the effect. And, and I think I tell people that if your goals are connected to purpose, it will increase productivity. So people have to know what the purpose is. My, matter of fact, you know, in the world of HR, purpose improves retention rates. Because if people know why they do what they do, it's kind of like, for example, if, if you go home and somebody says to you, you know, how was work? And they say, well, same old, same old. And then they say, well, well what do you do? And, and if your answer is a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and a lot of it, you know, if they never really grab a hold of their why, it, 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 it's really sometimes not going to enhance not just the retention, but even, you know, even in the recruiting process, trying to recruit employees to a company that really doesn't have that, you know, this is why we do what we do. You know, I heard an interview recently and, and it was over here in the United States. And, and one of the things that I loved was when the person said, the two greatest days of my life, the day I was born and the day I found out why I was born. You know, think about your company. The day that an employee really gets behind why you do what you do. And by the way, People look at me and sometimes say, oh, yeah, but, you know, we do this or we do that. And we're not really, listen, every company, there's a purpose behind it. And when you find that purpose, it drives employees to be what I call brand ambassadors. You know, they want to talk about where they work. They want to talk about what they do and the impact that they have. Absolutely. Uh, I think that is really what matters and what gives every company an edge over others, having a strong foundation and purpose to make a difference and change. Um, can't agree more with you on that one. That was great, Steve. Um, thank you so much for that enlightening perspective. Yes. <laughs> so just to kind of um, wrap this interview up, do you have any passing remarks or final sound bites you'd like to leave our audience with? Um, I, I Honestly, it's just more about thanking you. It's, it's thanking, you know, a, a company like yours to be out there. And, you know, you, you read about a variety of companies. And the question you just ask, why? You know, and, and, and I look at what you guys do and the difference that you make in the world of HR management. And, you know, when I think about, you know, you're developing a product and, and helping companies, organizations, you know, create and, and engage that customer experience. Um, your resources, by the way, are remarkable. Um, I, I'm, an, I'm a carnivorous reader. If you can't tell by the backdrop, this is not a stage backdrop. This is just a very small portion of my office and, and two walls lined up with books. And, and one of the things that I loved in, in, you know, your blogs, I mean, you have blogs, you have videos, you have products, you have eBooks. And I mean, I, I'm just one of those guys that says, wow, you know, when organizations understand, you know, that you got to develop people. And you heard me say at the outset, you know, one of the most important assets, no, the most important asset a company has is not just people, but the right people and, and recruiting those people. And then when you get the right people, you know, training them, mentoring them, coaching them, and just making sure, and it takes a lot of resources. It takes a determined a very laser focused approach to saying, we're going to every day get better. We're going to every day help our employees get better. And with your organization, the company that you are a part of, you know, I think that's the end for me here is just saying thank you. Thank you for doing what you do because it supports and really aligns with what I try to do every day. And that is just help people, just make people better at what they do. Thank you so, so much, Steve. That really means a lot to us. And um, in fact, thank you for taking out the time to share your valuable thoughts with us. And I completely, again, agree with you on uh, the final passing notes that you provided us with as well. Um, so thanks a lot. I mean, it was an absolute honor and privilege to be talking to you today. And uh, I'm really hoping to do a second lap of this sometime in the near future. Um, so thanks a lot. I had fun interviewing you, gained some really wonderful perspectives. I'm sure our audience uh, have also gained a lot of new insights from this interview. And we shall surely stay in touch. And um, yes, you do take care and have a healthy time ahead of you. 
Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And I would look forward and welcome the opportunity to come back. Yes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.